Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of From the Pages of WWF Magazine. I am Anthony, this is Collectors Entertainment Network, and today on From the Pages, we are at the November 1987 issue of WWF Magazine with Bam Bam Bigelow on the cover. In the last episode, you know that the Bobby Heenan October 1987 issue was the first one that I bought on newsstands. Everything previously were ones that I either got back issues, traded from friends uh, throughout the years, or more recently picked up on eBay. But starting last issue, the October 87, was the first one I started to buy. And then this is the second one that I bought on newsstand. Wasn't until, I think, March 88 where my subscription kicked in and I um, started getting them in the mail. So I was buying these on newsstands and... These are the ones I had as a kid, so some of them are a little bit more beat up, especially the, the catalogs are a little bit more beat up. I was cutting, I didn't want to mess with the magazines too much, but I was cutting things out of the catalog. So we'll see that as we get into it. But let's get into it. November 1987, Bam Bam Bigelow. All right, guys, here we go. November 1987 issue, Bam Bam Bigelow on the cover. Bam Bam Bigelow, WWF's Volcano, Randy Savage, Born to be Champion, Strike Force, Martel and Santana teaming up, Coco Beware exclusive interview, and Pile Driver new WWF album. And what do we have up here? It says in this issue, Savage, Strike Force, and Humperdink. All right. Let us get into the pages. You can see this is a little bit more beat up, by the way. I got this on October 13th, 1987 at Woody's, which means Woody's Goodies. It was a stationery store in my hometown. Here you go, Pile Driver, the music video, uh, I guess from Coliseum Home Video. That was the VHS you could get. I guess it was probably available on beta, but I don't see anything about it. Um, and here in Battle of the Titans, see, look, I've highlighted stuff. Like, this is, I got this in 1987. I was t 10 years old when I got it. Um, but here, the Battle of the Titans, what they have right down there is Killer Khan vs. Outback Jack. That's wrong. I think that was in the last issue or so. And what it really is, is uh, the Heart Foundation versus. Paul Roma and Jim Powers. So that is what it actually is. And we'll see that when we get into it. So there it is. Jesse the Body. Telling you to read it. You got your Superstars magazine sold out. But Superstars 2 is coming soon to your newsstand. I do have those. We got to go through those one of these days. Around the Ring. And your... Uh, I don't know if it's Columbia House, but it's something similar to Columbia, Columbia House. You've got your fan forum. And you have your uh, Micro League Wrestling for the Commodore 64. WWF list of and your uh, Brill Cream ad. you got something from Morocco, Axe Demolition. Ken Patera, Coco Beware, with Jimmy Hart, Outlaw Ron Bass. All right. Heenan signs rude exclusive photo. And then you've got Hulk size your Christmas stocking. I still have this Hulk Hogan light switch plate. It was on my uh, light switch in my room as a kid. And it is now currently on my son's light switch in his room. So I remember when we moved into this house, it, it was in a box or something. But when we moved into this house and my son finally got his own room, I just looked at my wife and said, uh, for Stevie's room, that's his name, Stevie. I said, for Stevie's room. And my wife said, uh, yeah, so he's got the Hulk Hogan light switch up oh, sensational Sherry. She had just won. The WWF Women's Title from the Fabulous Moolah. And here is an interview, a talk with Coco Beware. This is, I, I believe it's like, I could have swore there was another Coco Beware interview already like a year or so ago. 
Oh, that could be wrong. Yeah, here it is. Battle of the Titans. Roma and Powers whip the Heart Foundation, but miss title. So I guess they won, but maybe they beat him by a count out or disqualification or something like that. Mr. T, what was he doing there? Mr. T got himself involved. He wasn't in WrestleMania 3. He was in 1 and 2, but not 3. Here you go. The WWF's enforcer calling Mr. T. At this point, the E-team was off the air. Surprised he didn't uh, go a little more full-time with the WWF. Psychological Warfare in the Ring Mind Games. Jake the Snake there. You got the Hulkster. The Heart Foundation. Hercules at WrestleMania 3. Oh! Titanic Tunes. WWF stars snarl and sing on Piledriver. There you go. There is the cover of the album. There are almost all those guys actually uh, sing a song. I don't know, what does Hillbilly sing? I know he sings on the first one. Does he sing anything on Pile Driver? I don't remember. Obviously, Honky Tonk Man sings his song. Uh, Slick sings Jive Still Bro. Coco Beware sings the title track, Pile Driver. Jimmy Hart sings on it. All right. Here you go. Get all the WF news. Oh, so here is the beginning of the catalog. Which is probably a little beat up. This is the subscribe page. Still says summer 87. Spoiler alert. This is the last issue with this catalog. By next issue, they have a new catalog. Uh, which you'll see next week. So this is the last one with this catalog. Surprised it's as intact as it is. Like it's all taped back together and stuff. And here I'm, you know, I cut out some pictures of, I think it's actually from the other side, the picture of Hulk Hogan that I cut out for something. Some little craft, but that's supposed to be a picture of Hulk Hogan. There you go. WrestleMania shirts. All this stuff still sold out. Surprised you could still get all this stuff at that time. I mean, this stuff says sold out, but that stuff, I guess, was still available. Here is the posters and your order form. And I don't know, what did I cut out over here? Oh, I cut out whatever this uh, is. It's a uh, poster of something. Oh, I think it's the Hulk Hogan um, in, like, a convertible. And then there is the end of that. Oh, there's your LJN ad. Beautiful thing. Bam, bam, manager scramble for the Dodef's hottest and fastest new wrestler. Yeah, that was a whole big thing. It was like, who's Bam, bam going to sign with? And then each week they like, they had like all the managers like pictures on the screen. And then each week one got crossed off when he said no. So it's not any of those. It ends up being Oliver Humperdinck right here. So that was the big talk of fall of 87 was who is Bam Bam going with. And everyone assumed, because all the managers were bad guys, that Bam Bam would be a bad guy. But then Oliver Humperdinck came in and Bam Bam was a good guy. Randy Macho Man Savage, the courage of a champion. Uh, Macho Man looking good in that multicolored robe, sparkly. There he is with Elizabeth. This is during his face turn. Um, in October of 87 is when it officially happened on Saturday night's main event, which this is obviously not covering yet because this probably came out days, if not a week after that happened. So the next issue will probably have that covered. Here's Strike Force, the introduction of them. When Tom Zink left, they uh, teamed Martel up with Tito Santana and, call, and uh, created Strike Force. And in pretty short order, they're going to win the tag titles. In fact, in November 1987, they won the tag titles. But again, this came out in October of 87. They're always a month ahead of the date on the cover. So there is some more Strike Force stuff. Oh, Mammoth Dramatics, Andre in The Princess Bride. What a great movie. And of course, Andre was still a heel at this time. I mean, he when he filmed it, it was a year earlier. So he was still a face. That's why he actually took time off. You know, got suspended, uh, quote unquote, a year or so earlier. But 
by the time it came out, he was a heel. Now you can see this page right here. I did actually cut this picture out. I don't know if you can see the line there. And you can see right there, it sort of goes into the next page. I cut it out for something, but then I ended up putting it back in the magazine. So that's good. But yeah, you can see that it's been cut out. But that was me at 10 years old here at WDF Lowdown. I lined it up pretty, pretty well. Got it back in there. Here was, I was circling every magazine I had already had at that point. Or shortly thereafter. Wrap up. Up oh, there with the LJNs. You got Johnny V's got his. SD Jones has, he's got the uh, yellow Hawaiian shirt, tropical shirt, whatever you want to call it. But, um. First one I ever had was the red shirt. I already had the red shirt by this point, and I did not get the uh, tropical one for like sometime in the next year. Wrestlers rebuttal why I won the pose down by Natural Butch Reed. Oh, look at this! You got the crossword, and you've got Jim the Anvil Nightheart, who it looks like I turned into Gene Simmons of Kiss. Okay, and it looks like I also did the crossword all right and here is caught in the act can bulldogs fly well when you take a still photo of them in action falling it looks like they can but it looks like he's about to land so not necessarily fly gotcha remember those all right and here is the back issue oh i mean the back of the issue the superstars of wrestling ice cream bars everybody loved those and that is november 1987 issue all right, guys, that was the November 1987 issue, Bam Bam Bigelow, on the cover. Before I let you go, I'd like to ask you to please subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you back. Please comment down below. I would love to hear from you and your WWF Magazine stories and, and memories and all that. Uh, please share this with anyone you think may like it as well. And definitely please like the video. Okay. Next episode, we are going to finish out 1987 with the December 1987 issue, Macho Man Randy Savage on the cover. But that is it for this week. So until next time, have a good one.